Welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this really cool looking little motion graphic. So this is going to be part one where I'm going to show you how to do the modeling and how to do the animation. And then in part two, we're going to do some basic materials and lighting and then we can render this out as a final animation. So if you want to learn how to do this, keep watching and I will be uploading my original to Patreon. So let's jump in. So if a new scene opened up in Blender, go ahead and select all the default objects and press delete. And let's go shift A, let's add in a circle. And we're gonna tap into edit mode and we're just gonna go, let's go E to extrude as the scale. And let's go about this much, like that. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna tap back out. We're gonna give it a, uh, let's see, let's give it a solidify. And let's go into the negatives, give it a bit of thickness. And then let's give it a bevel modifier and let's bring that amount way down and just bump up the segments. Now we can give this a subdivision surface modifier, smooth it out a bit, and let's right, right click and go shade smooth. And there we have our first component. Now the nice thing about this is later we can come and scale these however we want, but for now I'm just leaving it you know, more or less like this. Um, I guess we could probably just go into object mode and just go to shift D to duplicate and Z to move down. Let's just move down another one of these, tab into edit mode and um, let me think about it. Perhaps we could just, yeah, I'll just probably be lazy here and go to the solidify and just take it into the negative some crazy amount, something like that. Okay, there we have it. And we're gonna leave it at that. But now we're gonna go shift A, we're gonna add in a UV sphere and we're gonna just go S 0.5. So S 0.5 to shrink it. And then we're gonna go control A and apply the scale. And it's gonna be able to fit down in here. So let's just uh, tab into edit mode, just go S, maybe scale it just a little bit more. And then let's grab this guy and just scale that out a little bit. And in here as well. Okay, something like that. Now that we have this, we can right click and go shade smooth. And let's go G, Z and move it up till it's sitting above here. I'm gonna tab into edit mode and let's select this whole edge here and go V and V will just cut it. So right click to let go. And let's give this a solidify modifier and let's give it some thickness into the negatives. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select a vertex at the top, go control L and then press H to hide it. And then I'm just gonna grab this guy here and scale it a little bit. Then I'm gonna go Alt H and then I'm gonna grab a vertex in the bottom, control L, press H to hide it. And then just select these bottom verts over here and then go E to extrude S to scale and then G, Z, move it down a bit and then E to extrude down S to scale. And then go Alt H to bring back the other guy. And what we're trying to do here is just kind of create a point where these two can come together, if that makes sense. Maybe go Control R, add in another loop here, take it up. But the idea is we're just kind of building this interlocking thing here and tab back out I'm gonna give this a subdivision surface modifier to smooth it out. So now we have this thing going on here. Um, what we actually could do is just tab into edit mode, just select the top half and just go P and separate selection, tab back out and now we have two separate pieces ready to go. Okay, we're now gonna go shift A, let's add in a torus. Tab into edit mode, let's go Alt S and scale it in, make it a bit skinnier and then Tab back out, let's go S to scale, and then G, Z, move it up in object mode and scale it till it fits here. And uh, I'm gonna go right click and go shade smooth. And you can tab into edit mode and make it skinnier if you want, but you know, I'm gonna go with something like that. And we want it sitting not too high or too low, just kind of at the bottom over here, holding this guy over here. We're then gonna go shift A, we're gonna add in a cylinder and let's go R90 and hit enter. S to scale that down and then G to move it. I'm gonna scale it down even more and place it right over here. And I'm gonna grab the torus and maybe I'm just gonna go give that a subdivision and then apply it. Then I'm gonna grab this guy and in edit mode, I'm just gonna select this face and I'm gonna go G, X and just move it way out like this and then tab back out. And let's grab this ring here, holding and shift select the bar and go control J to join it. And let's right click and go shade auto smooth. And now we've modeled this over here. So let's do some parenting. Let's grab this bottom shell here, holding and shift, let's select this holder, go control P and let's go object, keep transform. 
So now if we grab this um, holder for the bottom sphere and we press G, we can see it moves along. Okay, that's what we want. Now let's go shift A, let's just quickly add in a cylinder, G, Z, move it up, S to scale it down. And let's just place this on the top sphere like this. There we go. Let's give that a bevel and let's decrease that and let's increase the segment count, right click and go shade smooth. And what I'm gonna do is just select the top faces, bring them down and then E to extrude, S to scale, move it up a bit and maybe E to extrude again, up and scale. Mm, let's try something like this and then E to extrude, S to scale and then E to extrude on the Z and extrude it up. And now we kind of just have like this sort of cup thing here that grabs the top thing. And what we're gonna do with this guy selected, we're gonna hold in shift and select the top sphere. And we're gonna go control P and we're gonna go object, keep transform. That is to say, if we now grab this top sphere, half and we go G to move it, the top segment goes along. Okay, so we have these two parenting constraints here. Um, let's also go shift A. Let's quickly add in, in a front orthographic a camera. And I'm gonna go to my output settings and let's make it 1920 by 1920. In our right orthographic view, we're just gonna go G and move the camera back. And I'm gonna press zero to go into camera view. And um, you can choose a focal length of your choice. I'm just gonna look at my original. I think for my original, I went to my camera settings and I took it up to 65. That's what worked pretty good. And I'm gonna make sure that I have it more or less here in the center. I'm just gonna move it up a little bit and then R, X, and I'm just gonna rotate it down a little bit. So kind of this sort of view that you're seeing over here. Okay, so all the elements are coming together. We pretty much just need to add a slide. So we're gonna go Shift A, let's go to our mesh options, add in a plane. And go G, move it over to the side, S to scale it down. Because this is gonna be interacting with physics objects, let's go Control A and apply to scale. And now we're gonna tab into edit mode and let's just grab these verts over here and go G, move them in here, grab these ones, move them back, about here. Make a relatively long enough slide so it does, doesn't stick. Um, we, we need to be poking out of the camera view here. And then in the middle, you're gonna go Control R, add in a loop, double click, and then go G, Z, move it down. And you can just go Control Bevel, Control B for a bevel, roll the middle mouse button a few times, something like that, and then go Control R, add in two loops like so, and just slide them to the ends, just to kind of fix that weird shading. So now we have a simple slide. I mean, need I say more? I think any of you could probably model something like this at this point. And then let's just give it a, hmm, let's give it a solidify modifier, bring it into the negatives as well, or the positives, just so it kind of goes down. Really just depends on the direction of your normals. And tab back out and let's give it a bevel, bring down that bevel amount, bump up the segments and let's right click and go shade smooth. Now we have this nice looking ladder thing. So let's go into our camera view and uh, let's um, go do a little bit of animation. So we're gonna start and we'll add our spheres and rigid bodies in a bit, but we're just gonna do animation first. So we're gonna start by grabbing this holder for the bottom half of the sphere. And on frame one, in fact, let's just come to frame 70 first now that I think about it. On frame 70, we're gonna go I and insert a location keyframe. And then we're gonna go to frame one now on frame one, we're gonna go G and we're gonna go X and move it a bit out of scene like so, so we don't see it. And I'm gonna go I and insert a location keyframe over there. So now it's gonna move between frame one and frame 70 and it's gonna position itself here, which is what we want. We're also gonna, while we're at it, select this keyframe on frame 70 and go Shift D to duplicate it. And let's drag that over to frame 200 maybe just a tiny little bit past 200. And then we're gonna grab the first keyframe again and go Shift D to duplicate it and drag it close to 250. So what we're gonna have here is this situation. It's gonna come in between one and 70. It's gonna have a hold and between 70 and 200, this is where our icospheres are gonna simulate into the basket. And then it goes back and then it, the whole thing is loopable. But at the moment we have to issue with this one over here. So we're gonna grab it, the top half, 
And let's come to frame 60. And in frame 60 with this top half, mm, let me think about this. Um, I'm working backwards here. So let's maybe come to 140 first. And in 140, we're gonna go G and we're gonna go Z and move it up quite high about here. Let's go I and insert a location. And then we can come to frame 40. And on frame 40, at this position, we're gonna go I and insert a location. And then we're gonna backtrack to frame 60. And on frame 60, we're gonna go G, Z and move that guy up. And then we're gonna go I and insert a location. Just move it high enough so it's clearly out of the range of the camera. So if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar, we're gonna see this. It comes down and then this guy lifts down over here. But while we're at it, let's just come to frame 180. In fact, let's just grab the 140 keyframe and go shift D to duplicate it and drag it to 180. Cause we're gonna need a hold over here before that goes down into the hole here. So let's drag for our animation. And we can see over here, we have an intersection problem. So at about frame 70, let's just grab this um, slide here and go G, Z, move it up, just so it's sitting here. And we wanna make sure it's in enough, but not too far in, but not too far out. Just kind of over the edge here, just enough for our spheres to roll in here. And it's at the top, so it's not touching that. So we want it over here. And let's actually come to frame 90. And on frame 90, we're gonna go I and insert a location keyframe for that slide. And let's grab it, go shift D to duplicate, take it to frame one. It's kind of irrelevant um, to do it because it'll do a hold automatically, but it's just kind of to let me know that there is a hold over here and I shouldn't change that animation. So in case anybody points out that that was a redundant thing to do, that's kind of my reason for it. And then we're gonna go over to 120 and on frame 120, we're gonna go ahead and go G, X and move it back. And then we're gonna go I and insert a location keyframe. So this is what we're gonna have. If we go to frame one, hit the space bar. Our simulation is gonna happen. It's gonna go back. And one thing I'm noticing here is with the amount of time our little slide has here, it might be a little bit too quick. So let's just grab this um, handle that holds the bottom sphere. And let's just go to its starting frame and let's just go enable auto keying and go G, X and just move it a little bit closer but still out of the view of the camera and then turn off auto keying. And now it should have a little bit more time here under the slide. If anything, we could even grab the slide and we can come here and just grab the two end keyframes here and just move them up a little bit just so we get a little bit more time just before this guy comes down here because we don't want that intersecting with the slide. Okay, now obviously we need to correct another thing here. Let's just grab the top shell we can see as the bottom um, sphere pulls away, the one at the top is still there. We can see as the bottom sphere pulls away, it's um, not making sense because we want it to fall down. So what we're actually gonna do is let's grab both the top sphere and the bottom sphere. And let's go in, I'd say to frame 180. And let's go I and insert a location frame for both of those. Okay, at that point. And let's go over to frame 200 and let's with both of them active enable auto keying and then go G and then go Z and on 200, let's bring them down into the hole so we can't see them. And then let's turn off auto keying. So this is what we should have. And then this guy pulls away and we're not gonna be able to see it over here. And if that is the case where we can see it out of the camera view, you can either readjust the camera or we can come back to 200 and with both of those still active, I'm just gonna enable auto keying and go G, Z, move it even deeper. And now turn off auto keying and we should see here that we don't see it through the camera view. Okay, so it just kind of looks like it's gone down into the hole like that. Now, what about this top rod here? All we're gonna do with that is we're also gonna come, I'd say probably let's come to about frame 140, just as it set this thing down at frame 140, let's with this top suction cup thing go I and insert a location. And let's go up to frame 200 and let's go G, Z, move it all the way up and then go I and insert a location. So now let's go to frame one and let's see if all of this is making sense. So we have this guy coming in. We have our spheres will be rolling in at this point. Then this comes down. They both go down into hole and then this comes back. And then the whole thing will repeat. Now obviously the only thing that was out of place there um, was the slide. So we just need to grab the slide 
And once it's out of the way, let's go grab this keyframe at 140 and let's just go shift D to duplicate it. Take it to about 200. And let's just grab the first keyframe here and go shift D and drag it to the end. Just so our um, slide goes back to where it should be originally. And now this is seamless, okay? So I know animation can sometimes be a little bit tricky, especially if you're new. You've got to keep a lot of different things in your head, but the main idea here now is kind of achieved. So I'm just gonna save this to my desktop. And what we're gonna be doing now is adding in our icosphere. So let's go to frame one. Let's go shift A, let's add in some icospheres. I'm gonna go ahead and bump up the subdivision. I'm gonna go S to scale them down and move them over here, make them a lot smaller something like that. And I'm gonna go Control A and apply that scale, very important. And let's go ahead and give that under our physics a rigid body. Let's make it active, which it is by default. And under the shape, we're gonna make it sphere. And now let's grab the ladder here, or the slide. Let's give that a rigid body, but we're gonna make it passive. Under the shape, we're gonna make it mesh. And we're gonna make sure to enable animate it, otherwise it won't work. So now if we did a little bit of a test by going to frame one and we hit the space bar, we can see we have physics here, but it's starting a little bit too early. So let's just go to our scene properties. Under rigid body world, let's just go to the cache and let's start it maybe at 30 instead of one. If we go back to frame one and we hit the space bar. Sometimes you have to just grab your sphere and tab in and out of edit mode. It's a bit of a bug, but then it should run again. And there we go. Okay, so that seems okay. Obviously, we need to grab the bottom shell. We need to go to our physics and give that a rigid body and make it passive as well. Make sure to change the collision to mesh and let's make it animated because it is animated. And now if we go back to frame one and we hit the space bar, there we have it. It's now captured our little icosphere. Um, quick tip, if you want to, you can just tap into edit mode and scale it that way so you don't mess the scale up. I'm gonna make it a bit bigger and then I'm gonna go in fr my first frame, I'm gonna go Shift D to duplicate and just duplicate as few of these spheres, like so, Shift D, like so. And then I'm gonna go hit the space bar. And there we go, that's working beautifully. You could, if you wanted to, add many more of them, if you wish. Um, but, you know, they might start falling out after a certain point. But there we go, I'm gonna go with about that many. That's looking really, really cool. I'm very happy with that. So now we have an animation. In fact, let's just go and go to our scene properties and let's just go ahead and bake this cache. So now it's baked in, okay? I'm also gonna select my camera. I'm gonna to go to my camera settings and under the camera here, or I think it's the viewport display, we're gonna to come to the pass part out and we're just gonna take that up to a value that's a bit darker like this and now that's less distracting so now we can really kind of get an idea of what our animation is looking like it's all cached make sure to save and what we're gonna be doing in part two is setting up our materials and our lighting